All right, guys, welcome back to part four of Project LT250R. It's been a while since we messed with Project LT250R. Obviously, if you've been paying attention to the channel, we've been working on Project LT500R, and we got that 99%. Uh, meanwhile, Project LT250R is probably like 90%, so we got to do some things to it today, and I'll show you what that is right now. All right, guys, so if you remember last time we left off, um, Project LT250R is pretty much done except for a couple little things. The spark plug boot needs to be wired up. Um, you can see with my current setup, I don't think I'm gonna be getting very good spark. Um, and then other than that, it pretty much just needs some fluids, it needs some oil, some antifreeze, and some fuel. And I'm gonna try to get it started up for you guys. you guys how to install a uh, spark plug boot to the spark plug wire. This is the wire that comes off of the coil. You have the spark plug boot and it has these two little rubber <laughs> boots, I guess you can call them. Um, make sure that you put this one on first and then you'll see in here there is a little screw inside there and that is not for a nut it's a coarse thread screw and it's actually made to be driven right into the core of the spark plug wire um, so i'm going to leave a little bit of wire exposed just a little bit just because we want to make sure that this uh this whole system has good contact so a little bit there and then i'm going to just start screwing basically so i'll screw on there i was right in the center there and then I'll obviously just go till it's bottomed out All right, so we're on there pretty tight. I'm, I'm yanking and nothing's coming off, so that's pretty much it right there. Your spark plug should come with this aluminum adapter on top. You can actually unscrew that, because like right now, this spark plug boot, this adapter actually doesn't fit in to the hole there. So I remove the aluminum adapter, and then now, when I put it in, it fits right in. So I can put my boot back on. I can put the spark plug in and it just goes all the way in and it's in there nice and snug. So a little update for you guys. I am basically just doing the last touches uh, needed before I fire it up. I've got to put the silencer on and if you remember from last time, um, basically the silencer is supposed to route in the frame there, but since this is a third gen and the silencer is supposed to go outside of the frame, I don't really have any options besides actually removing the air box. So I didn't really want to do that. Um, this kind of has a unique system. The air boot there you can see goes around the shock and there's really no like uh, just open air filter that I can run right off of the carburetor. So I'm actually gonna have to keep this boot in place, take the box off, take this intake boot up, uh, take the boot up off up there and then I'm basically just gonna have to hope that this is supported decently and then run an open air filter roughly around here. Um, that's what I'm gonna have to do for air for this bike and it kind of sucks because if you've ever ridden in the dunes, which is what this bike's about to do, sand is your worst nightmare. Um, sand getting in your engine is your worst nightmare and it's really, really difficult to keep a nice sealed system. Um, to where sand doesn't get through. So I got my work cut out for me with figuring out a system there, but yeah, I gotta take the airbox off. All right, so because my exhaust system is fitting so horribly, I've actually got an opportunity to do something that I always thought would be really cool, but never wanted to go through the hassle of having it fabricated. Um, kind of a center mount exhaust. <laughs> um, so this exhaust actually naturally wants to fit right about here. Um, it's supposed to mount up outside, uh, but it's really not a big deal. I went ahead and I used um, my tap to 
create threads all the way through that hole. And now I can bolt up the silencer right there and then we'll have a center mount exhaust. And then I got to recolocate my reservoir, but I needed to undo it anyways because I've got that mod quad, uh, that, that last mod quad um, reservoir mount. And then I got to get two more for the front. And so I am going to mount that up nice and secure and then fasten my silencer up in the middle, which I'm actually kind of excited about. All right, I think I've got the silencer situation figured out. The reservoir is mounted nice and tight. My silencer is nice and tight. Um, I got spark. I need motor oil and antifreeze. 250 quad racers take 900 milliliters of oil. You can see it there on the side of the uh, clutch cover. I recommend an 80 weight Bell Ray gear saver oil for the transmission. I'm gonna add the antifreeze now. And if you remember on Project LT500R, there was a little weep hole, a little weep bolt on the top of the head. And 250 quad racers have that as well, except for on aftermarket heads like this cool head that I'm running on Project LT250R. I don't know about you guys, but I cannot for the life of me pour antifreeze without overflowing it and spilling it on the ground. All right, I'm gonna check for spark real quick. My switch is on. I'm gonna ground out the spark plug. I'm gonna kick it over. So this, guys, is where my problems started beginning. I was not getting any spark and I spent five and a half hours trying to diagnose every single part of the electrical system, testing for continuity, checking, double checking, triple checking connections, going back in and removing even more powder coat from all the mounts where I needed parts to be grounded, checking for loose grounds and still nothing. So this is where I was completely out of time and my dad and uncle were able to basically come in and save the day. They were able to take the bike, um, and diagnose basically the last issue that we could all think of, which was the pickup coil being bad. I can't thank my uncle enough. He was able to go into the motor and sure enough, one of the pickup coil wires was worn thin and it was no longer making connection. So he was able to actually go into one of his bikes and pull out the pickup coil uh, just to help me out. And uh, can't thank you enough, uh, totally saved the day. Here's what I had to say after five and a half hours of chasing a no spark. I just wanted to say real quick that this is how you become really knowledgeable about ATVs and it's not a very easy process. Right now I am diagnosing a no start on the Project LT250R um, and I have tried everything, everything. So I've gone from, uh, what happened is I had Spark and then I lost it. Um, for some reason, I don't know what the reason is, but um, obviously that means that I lost connection somewhere. Um, so I have checked the coils, I've swapped coils, I've swapped CDIs, I've made sure that my motor is grounded. I have a grounding uh, strap right, right there, the black and yellow thing. Um, that goes straight up to where my coil mounts. I have searched seemingly everything. Um, I've double checked all my wire connections. They're all good and solid up there. Um, I think I'm down to just my key switch maybe going bad. Um, but yeah, I just kind of wanted to share with you guys that experience is definitely the best way to learn. Um, there's only so many things that you can learn by, by thinking through a process, by reading things online. That's a great start. Um, but yeah, you kind of just have to throw yourself into the thick of things sometimes. Just try to figure things out. And don't get discouraged. Discouragement is what kills so many projects. Um, use as a tool, 
to uh, learn. Once you get once you get through the difficult time, you'll be on the other side and you will now have that in your arsenal when the problem comes back up again in the future. Day two, coming back at it with a fresh mind, fresh energy. Let's get after it. Let me let you guys in on a little pro tip when it comes to working on bikes or just living a happy, healthy life. This guy is basically an inversion table that you just lie down on. You basically put your armpits under those guys over there, throw your feet through that thing, and then you crank on the little handle right there, and you can set the level of stretch that you want to set. Um, inversion tables, you can only flip upside down for like 45 seconds. This thing you can lay on for minutes at a time. I stretch every morning with this thing and it keeps my back feeling good. That's super crucial when it comes to uh, being productive and enjoying your time, not just when you're working on bikes, obviously, just in general with everything you do. Uh, pro tip. All right, all done with that. Ugh. Let's go work on some two strokes. All right, guys, just got back to the shop. Let's get going. All right, so I'm actually squeezing today's video in before work. I uh, have got to uh, button the wiring back up. It's all apart right now. I've got to reposition my tie rods because they're actually hitting the bottom of the A-arms right now. Um, I've got a trick that I'm gonna do with those. And then I also have to set my toe in and toe out. I don't know if I'll set my um, camber in or out with the wheels yet by adjusting the upper ball joints. Not sure what I'm gonna do uh, there yet. And then I've got to make a different mount for this FTZ pipe. This one uh, is coming up way short. I'm not really sure how it was so different. Um, this whole motor and everything came out of an 89 250 quad racer, which is one of the second gen quad racers. Um, I'm not quite sure why this bracket's so off, but I gotta make a new one of those. Um, I've got to figure out my airbox situation because I won't be able to run my airbox due to the second gen pipe that's on it. I've got to figure out an external air filter, an open air filter um, to run in the dunes. I've got to button up the rear end here. I got to put a brake stay on. I've got to put the pinch bolts in the swing arm too. I've actually got a pretty cool um, little addition that's really gonna finish off the rear end of the quad uh, really, really nicely. And then I got to, I got some bolts I got to track down and uh, put in there to hold the sprocket on. I got to throw a brake pedal on it and then um, pretty much good to go at, at that point. Um, good to at least try and start it and we'll see how things go. I'll probably put the chain on as well. But yeah, let's get to it. Greetings from the loft of the shop. Up here, we've got a bunch of pretty cool stuff as well. Going from left to right, we've got a bunch of vintage slot mags and hurricane wheels. If you're into old trucks, um, the slot mags are these guys. Um, hurricane wheels are those guys. If you're into 70 and 79 Ford trucks, at all, then this corner is for you. Um, moving on this way, there's actually a first gen quad racer hybrid that uh, is ready to be built. That might be a future project, not too sure there. Um, in the tubs here, we've got the 250 quad racer parts, LT500R parts, 230 quad sport parts, LT80 parts down there. And then this tub is actually parts for the Protrax uh, JP quad racer. I'll show you a little bit out of that here in a second. Um, got a lot of cool parts in here. In here, you'll actually see uh, for the first time in the garage, some Honda stuff. Um, there's some Honda hubs there. If you're familiar with, if you know what these spindles are, you know what they are. If you don't, I'll get to them in a later video, along with the rest of the front end, the arms, the stem. Um, but for this, parts pick this morning what I'm grabbing is this guy this is a rear bumper this is one of my favorite pieces that I was waiting to show you guys for a future build but I realized that it would fit on project LT250R and so it had to make a guest appearance this is a rear bumper that goes onto the carrier like so like that. 
And uh, yeah, let me know if you guys have ever seen one of these before. It's a, it's a really nice compliment to the, uh, the legendary Duncan front bumper. Um, I love the skinny tube, the skinny, uh, skinny tube chrome. And uh, the look is replicated out the back there. It's a pretty cool piece. Let me know what you guys think. For a big Suzuki Quad Racer enthusiast, uh, this is one of those parts that just kind of like, again, puts the cherry on the top of a build. It's just like, wow, that's, that's a pretty cool piece. I haven't seen many of them. Again, I cannot thank my dad and my uncle enough. Um, I didn't have any time to try and diagnose why this thing wasn't getting spark. And they picked the bike up and spent a weekend with it and were able to diagnose that it was the pickup coil inside the stator uh, that's inside the engine on the opposite side, the left side of the motor. Um, and they were able to replace it and get it all fixed for me. And this is the most joyous sight I've seen, honestly, in this entire series of building bikes so far. Look close. Mm -hmm. It's got good, consistent, healthy spark. Dad, uh, uncle, uncle, I, I, I cannot thank you guys enough. You guys completely saved the day. I totally appreciate you guys. So basically I've got to get a little bit crafty with the tie rods here. So as you can see, they're extremely close to the upper A-arms and uh, traditionally you mount it on the top of this bracket right here, um, just like it is. However, it's hitting and you can kind of see that my geometry is a little bit messed up too. I'm gonna have a lot of bumps here with this setup and that's because the tie rod is at a different angle than the uh, upper A-arm. And what that's gonna make is the, um, the A-arms and tie rods will travel at a different um, angle. And so the tie rod will get to its flattest point, its most perpendicular point to the stem at a different rate that the A-arm will, which will make this, the wheel, um, the tire, uh, turn a little bit as the uh, suspension is, is in its travel. So the tire will likely and it's once it's compressing, the tire will likely tow in and then we'll go back, tow back out once the suspension goes back down. Um, so it's actually gonna kill two birds with one stone. I'll fix the clearance issue here and I will get the uh, tie rod and A-arms more aligned by flipping, by taking the tie rod out and flipping it upside down and putting it in upside down like that everything will be more in line so i tightened it up there and now hopefully you can see just how much clearance how much space I, I freed myself up here and how everything is in the same line now so i killed two birds with one stone Boom, now that is one makeshift bracket. I've got to mix some more gas for Project Delta 250R. I had to run some 110 octane, get rid of the old gas that was in the tank. Um, just a reminder, 20 ounces for five gallons or four ounces per every one gallon if you're mixing uh, two stroke gas, 32 to one. 
the most crucial part of every building process. Will I make the H1R empty bottle into the trash can all the way across the room? Totally nailed it. All right, guys. It kind of feels like everything's coming together. Um, we just did the first startup and ride of Project LT 500R. We're about to do the first startup of Project LT 250R. Um, and it's a good thing too, because we have to be on the dunes in three days. Uh, practically no time. Uh, really, uh, really sending out some prayers that everything stays on track and that we don't have too many more um, unforeseen issues. Uh, all right guys, without further ado, let's get this thing fired up. I must warn you guys, viewer discretion advised. What's about to happen is called dieseling, and for most this is very avoidable, but for me I was rushing through things and I wasn't properly set up to deal with it. What's about to happen is a little bit cringeworthy, it's also a little bit funny. Uh, yeah, I'll just let you guys see what happened and I'll talk about it a little bit later in the video. That wasn't good. The stator flew off and is over there. I had the stator cover off. Wow. Not what you want to see. All right, guys, that was pretty gnarly. Basically, when my uh, dad had taken it back to uh, check the spark, my dad and uncle threw on a new stator just to test for spark. Um, but they hadn't tightened anything down. Uh, they hadn't tightened the flywheel down at least. And then we actually want to take the flywheel back off and throw some Loctite on the screws that actually hold the stator uh, on. So what happened is I, I had taken the um, stator cover off, just wanted to see if it run for a second. I, I assumed it would be tight enough um, just to fire it for a second and shut it off. And then obviously worst case scenario happened. So when I fired the bike up, it revved to the moon and I went against my own advice. I have no chain on and I actually didn't even have a shift lever or the clutch cable hooked up. So there was no way for me to get this thing in gear. So when I fired it up, you might've seen, I first checked the choke, see, see if the choke was jacking with it. Nope, nothing. So then I just tried to turn it off. Well, my key switch did nothing. So then I ran down and I pulled the spark plug boot. Obviously you'd think, you know, that would kill power, but the motor was dieseling. So dieseling, again, um, when a motor, a two-stroke especially, is revving so fast, um, it actually can continue um, igniting the oil even after the spark uh, boot has completely been disconnected. Um, it's kind of insane, but you guys get to experience it there. Um, the motor was already revving to the moon, so my last option was just to cut the fuel um, even though that usually revs bikes to the moon, it was already revved to the moon. I just needed to cut off the fuel source. Um, and I was able to do that and get it to shut itself off. But man, that is not how you want to have a motor start up. Um, it should be okay. Uh, my splines look okay. I might need to run a die on them 
make sure they're all nice. I actually didn't lose my keyway, which is that little guy stuck in there. That's what keeps the stator uh, rotating and not just spinning on that shaft. Um, everything should be okay. So I dodged a huge bullet there. Um, it runs, uh, don't start bikes up without them being properly uh, specced and uh, maybe add Loctite where it's necessary. Um, lucked out, could have been a lot worse. Um, but regardless, Project LT250R does run. Um, it's huge. And so I'm gonna get the stator cover all, the stator side all figured out and we'll be good to go. Um, the steering now feels a lot better. The front end looks and feels a lot better. I gotta tighten up the rear end. Um, throw some brake levers on, uh, figure out the air filter. And then we, ladies and gentlemen, are good to go to Little Sahara. So close, so close. Project LT250R might definitely still need some tuning. Uh, we'll see if uh, we can get the idle down and see where it's at there. Um, fingers crossed that it doesn't need too much because we're out of time. Um, but yeah, thanks guys for watching. Until next time. That wasn't good.